सो रिसेंटली आई अपलोडेड अ वीडियो ऑन माई चैनल अबाउट द न्यू लॉन्च ऑफ माई स्प्रिंग बूट एडवांस बैक एंड डेवलपमेंट को हट टू बी वेरी ऑनेस्ट वी हैव रिसीव्ड अ वेरी ओवरवेलमिंग रिस्पॉन्स एंड आई एम रियली हैप्पी दैट अ लॉड ऑफ यू गाइज आर एक्चुअली एक्साइटेड अबाउट द कोर्स इन दैट पर्टिकुलर वीडियो इट वॉज मोर और लेस अबाउट अ कोर्स अनाउंसमेंट वेयर आई वॉज जस्ट टॉकिंग अबाउट वॉट आर द मेजर ऊबर लेवल एक्सपेक्टेशन दैट यू कैन हैव विद द कोर्स अ लॉड ऑफ यू वर एक्चुअली आस्किंग फॉर सम इन डेप्थ एनालिसिस ऑन वॉट इज द सिलेबस कॉन्टेंट दैट वी आर गोइंग टू कवर इन दैट कोर्स बिकॉज देर आर अ लॉड ऑफ जार्गन्स मैंशन हेर एंड देयर अबाउट लेट से डिस्कशन ऑन सागा पैटर्न डिस्कशन ऑन सी क्यू आर एस डिस्कशन ऑन स्प्रिंग बूट जे पी ए एंड वॉट नॉट सो इन दिस पर्टिकुलर वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू क्लैरिफाई ऑल ऑफ योर क्वेश्चन इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट स्लाइटली अ बिट मोर डीपर डिटेल्ड सिलेबस एनालिसिस अराउंड वॉट ऑल कॉन्सेप्ट एंड टॉपिक्स we are going to cover in the course although all of these things are very dedicatedly mentioned already on the website you can go to the link mentioned in the description section below and you can find all of the topics mentioned in a very detailed fashion on the course website in the form of the syllabus but if you don't want to do all of that hassle don't worry i have got you covered in this video i'm going to walk you through the complete syllabus of our spring boot back in development cohort so without any further ado let's just start but before starting the video If you have not yet subscribed to the channel, do consider subscribing to the channel and hit that bell icon so that you can get all the new notifications about the new Spring Boot cohort that we have technically launched. So let's just start. So you can see I have a detailed document in which I have pushed most of the things that are going to be important for you to know about the syllabus of our Spring Boot cohort. So you can see this is going to technically help you. to level up yourself from a very beginner level um i would say developer to a very senior software engineer role level developer altogether right if you are somebody who knows almost nothing about backend don't worry this course is going to be very much suitable for you the only expectation is going to be that you know a basics of java and a few things here and there about let's say basics of computer network and all but even if you don't know about that don't worry we are going to have a prerequisite section dedicatedly present where you will be able to learn everything about java and the other important prerequisites okay so if i talk about what what is the major highlight of the course you are going to cover some really advanced concepts all together we are going to see some advanced concepts like cqrs pattern the command query responsibility segregation why do you need it when do you need it how can you implement this how eventually event sourcing can help you to implement a lot of things around cqrs without event sourcing how you can implement cqrs what are the application scenarios in which you will need cqrs all of that then we are going to talk about the api composition and the materialized view pattern what are the situation in which you need these two patterns how these two patterns facilitate a lot of things in the microservices architecture of any backend application we are going to see what is saga pattern how saga pattern can be used for distributed transactions we are going to see the orchestration level implementation and the choreography level implementation there are two ways in which you can actually get saga pattern implemented we are going to talk about both of these in depth right we are going to talk about event sourcing using kafka there are other solutions as well but we are going to technically try to focus on kafka there are some more additional concepts like cdc that is change data capture when do you need change data capture why do you need change data capture why not triggers can help you with change uh, with like with, just with triggers why you cannot help uh, everything for yourself we are going to talk about transactional outbox pattern as well we are going to see different different consistency models in your databases like eventual casual and immediate consistency some internal db internals we are going to talk about what are write ahead logs how exactly buffer pools works discussion on lsm trees and what not we are going to cover both rdbms and no sqls throughout different different projects in your course apart from this we are going to talk about geo hashing how geo hashing works what are the alternatives to geo hashing how geo hashing is better than quad trees what are quad trees how you can implement your projects with geo hashing and what not and we are going to talk about distributed locking we are going to compare distributed locking with pessimist and optimistic lock how can you implement pessimistic lock how you can implement optimistic lock how you can implement distributed locks using redis all of this we are going to talk about we are going to see api gateways service discovery replication database replication and sharding and what not so these are kind of like the major highlights and the important stuff that we are going to technically cover if we see what all projects we have included i have like in the last i would say iteration there was a uh, like request from a couple of students to cover all of these advanced concept but because the nature of the course or the nature of the last cohort and the timeline that we expected for the last cohort was relatively small that's why we kept only one major big project 
This time to ensure that we are able to cover all of these wide variety of concepts, we have multiple projects coming up. So the first project that was of course part of the last cohort as well is the Uber backend that we are going to technically cover. In this Uber backend project, what we are technically going to do is we are going to cover how exactly the concepts of geohashing can come into the place, how exactly you will be able to communicate with different different clients using WebSockets. So we are going to see how WebSockets are implemented with Spring Boot. Right, this is going to be an important concept to learn. Right, not a lot of people actually explore how WebSockets work with Spring Boot. Right, we are going to see that okay, how exactly the driver location tracking and everything can help. All of this implementation we are going to see in the Uber backend, and this is going to be a dedicated microservice driven project. We are going to have different different microservices to actually facilitate a lot of different aspects of Uber. Then there is an important uh, project that we are going to talk about that is going to be a payment wallet system. You can say it's very similar to what you see as let's say Uber wallet or maybe what you see as let's say Paytm wallet. A lot of applications have their own wallet system, right? Now wallet is very close to how like regular money transactions actually happen and this is going to be a very good playground for us because we are going to see CQRS, event sourcings, outbox pattern, all of this with payment wallet system. We are going to see how transactional integrity can be actually implemented, right? How you can actually do uh, transfers from uh, let's say for example assume that you have implemented your own Paytm wallet, Uber wallet, how transfers are actually going to work. We are going to see some interesting concepts that okay how exactly two-phase commit works, how without two-phase commit instead of using two-phase commit if you use saga how things can actually work for you how like we are going to talk about what should be the sharding strategy for your database in case you have a high scalable um, architecture to be developed and whatnot then we are going to talk about another project that is going to be a airbnb or let's say some kind of a booking system because we are going to see that okay how exactly bookings actually work we are going to see the auth mechanism working here we are going to see locking mechanisms that how exactly pessimistic lock optimistic lock distributed locking all of that works with airbnb right we are going to see that how race conditions can be handled we are going to see role based authentication and whatnot there are a couple of minor projects that is going to be kind of like a social media uh, and this is going to be more like a monolith right for quora right we are going to have core our Twitter like a monolith. All of these other projects are going to be dedicated microservice based project, all these three. The Cora one and the hotel, uh, like this should be hospital, right? The hospital management system. This is going to be more like a monolith. This is going to be slightly more uh, on the basic side, but an interesting aspect of the Cora project is going to be for the elastic search integration that how you can integrate elastic search so that people can do a full text search kind of like a query, how elastic search work, what are inverted indexes. We are going to slightly take a deeper dive into elastic search as well. That's going to be interesting. So you can see these are the project highlights. Now, if I go step by step into the dedicated topics, let's let's go through that. So we are going to start with build systems. We are going to see what are build system. Why do you need build system? A lot of people think that okay, build system like you have to build the project. But why do you have to build the project? What is the need of a build system? What, why build system exists? Is it because we have multi-file project? Why not we can just compile one by one by one all of them? I'm going to show you that okay, if you have a single file, how things work. Because let's say if you have done DSA with Java, you might have never used a build system altogether, right? You just used to compile your file and then run it. But why build systems come to the picture, right? We are going to see one of the most uh, important build system that is going to be Gradle, and we are going to see the actual implementations that how you can use Gradle in our projects, right? There is going to be an alternative uh, introduction that we are going to see to Bazel as well, right? This is a build system launched by Google, right? And a lot of Google projects are powered by Bazel. We are going to see how Bazel actually works. We are going to see how you can create modules, what are fat jars. We are going to see that how some JVM tuning and everything you can do with the Gradle build system. And we are going to see aspect oriented programming. This is going to be something very important. Then we are going to talk about some low level design aspects because as far as I believe that no Spring Boot concepts is complete. If you have very less clarity around low level design, design patterns and everything. So we are going to see some very important design patterns like singleton pattern, builder pattern, strategy pattern and observer pattern. We are going to see that how exactly DTOs and mappers work, how exactly adapter pattern can actually help you to implement your DTOs, right? Don't worry if you don't know about DTO, we'll talk about everything that's data transfer objects. We are going to see how we can have uh, validations, how exactly different design patterns like chain of responsibility come into the picture. And we are going to see important solid principles because without solid principles, of course, you won't be able to understand anything how we are actually structuring our code in Spring Boot. Then we are going to talk about REST API development. We are going to actually see that uh, how exactly REST APIs are developed. What are APIs? Why do we need APIs? Why REST is one of the most profound ways of writing APIs? What is uh, HitOS altogether? Pagination, filtering, rate limiting. We are going to see all of this. There is a concept of controller advices, how that actually work. We are going to see all of that and we'll try to integrate documentation through Swagger. 
we are going to see microservices because most of the projects are going to be powered by microservices we are going to see monolith versus microservices we are going to see some interesting patterns like circuit breaker breaker pattern fallback pattern we are going to see how you can actually have service discovery using uh, netflix eureka what is spring cloud config what is domain driven design we are seeing going to see all of this then we are going to see event driven systems like kafka because we will be talking about event sourcing and a lot of asynchronous processing is going to happen through kafka so we are going to see the setup of kafka we are going to see kafka brokers how exactly zookeeper earlier used to uh, do a lot of things with Kafka, how you can integrate Kafka with Spring Boot, what is Kafka template, right? How you can actually use Kafka with outbox pattern in different different databases. We are going to see CQRS and outbox pattern along with CDC using DBZM. This is going to help you to understand what is the CQRS pattern, when do you need it. We are going to talk about change data capture using DBZM and a lot of things. For caching mechanism, we are going to have dedicated Redis related caching. In fact, in the Uber project also, Redis is going to play a very, very important role. We are also going to see that how you can have distributed logs, how you can actually cache things using Redis. What are the different, different caching strategies, right through cache, right around cache, and what are the different invalidation strategies altogether. Then, uh, apart from REST APIs, a lot of our microservices are going to communicate through gRPC. So, we are going to see what is gRPC, what is protobuf, how exactly protobuf is slightly better than JSONs. There is an alternative to protobuf that is Thrift and Avro, where we can maybe have an introduction to that, but a lot of focus goes through, uh, will be uh, on protobufs, how you can write protobufs, how you can get some Java code generated with gRPC clients, and we are going to see gRPC for our communication between different microservices. A very, very important part about the Spring Boot architecture, that is the Spring Boot data GPA, that is going to help us to communicate with a lot of database for a lot of queries we are going to see what is table per class joint class joint tables single tables what is cascading and fetch types we are going to see different different load loading strategies like lazy loading eager loading we are going to see the n plus one problem why this can be a problematic scenario there is a very important aspect that is called as db migrations right so we are going to see how exactly scale uh, sql db migration you can actually facilitate using flyway right some advanced database concepts we are going to see around uh, redo logs write ahead logs b trees we are going to see um, lsm trees asset concepts cap theorem we are going to see why uh, what concepts of cap theorem are going to be applied on our projects we are going to see authentication using spring security token based authentication and role based authorization we are going to see web sockets we are going to see how you can set up your storm server and everything all of this we are going to talk about we are going to also talk about testing right how you can write good unit tests we are going to talk about deployment uh, in ci cd using docker right and there are going to be some system designs because we are going to cover a lot of projects so we are going to see some high level design of those concepts as well we are going to cover some basics of system design like consistent hashing cache invalidation circuit breaker pattern cap theorem quorums database sharding database replication and then we'll try to do the system design of all of the projects that we are going to implement like Quora or twitter you can say uh, uber airbnb all of this and as a final outcome, definitely you can expect that you will be able to not just design but also code extremely heavy large scale system. You will be able to understand some real life problems around payment system, booking system and chat system. And in any backend application that you see, all of these concepts are very, very important. Like the way we have designed the course is going to technically ensure that you are not just learning CRUD. Making CRUD API is something that you can definitely learn for free. I definitely encourage you to go to YouTube and try to learn all of these concepts for free. But if you want to go from beginner to advanced level, you cannot just rely on CRUD API because there is a lot of important things that goes on behind the scenes. Of course, when you will be join, joining a company, you'll be having a dedicated business problem to solve. But all of these engineering concepts are going to be applied to those business problems. And how you can actually code these is something that a lot of people struggle with. A lot of people know that, okay, how what is Saga pattern? But maybe they have never implemented the saga pattern they have never done the coding implementation of saga pattern this is what we are going to technically focus they have never probably done the coding of cqrs pattern they have never probably done how event sourcing can work what is synchronous communication what is asynchronous communication between microservices all of these things sometimes people have not explored and that's what we are going to do we are going to do the hands-on using spring boot because you know that java is something that a lot of enterprise level companies and big tech companies do actually use a lot of fintech companies use java so we are going to use java and we are going to use Spring Boot and we are going to see how Spring Boot is going to make our life easy. A lot of interesting things are going to happen, right? Um, I'll be also posting a dedicated roadmap level video where if let's say you want to learn Spring Boot on your own, what should be the ideal roadmap to go forward with? That roadmap will be having even more detailed explanation on everything around the syllabus. Like uh, currently talked about the major topics, 
in that video i'll be talking about the major sub topics the topics inside every topic what is individually that we are going to cover and if you want to cover things yourself you can definitely follow that road map but that complete road map is going to be something that we are going to follow you can definitely see that in the past co cohorts in the past courses of algo camp as well we have ensured that we don't just keep you hanging around at a very beginner level of development we start taking you from the very beginner level to the advanced level because i at least believe that every student if given a chance can definitely become a senior engineer altogether you need to get exposed to these concepts it's not like because you are a beginner you cannot get exposed and you cannot work on these interesting and challenging problems you are not going to be just a i would say stagnant developer or a very beginner level developer with this cohort we are going to ensure that your mastery in back end with spring boot takes one level up uh, we bring you one level up and we level up overall your skills around back end development so do check out the link in the description section below uh, you can use this coupon code flashing on your screen to get maximum discount don't just go and directly get that same uh, course please do use this coupon so that you can get maximum discount altogether and if you have any questions any thoughts do let me know in the comment section i would be really happy to actually answer most of your question that being said let's wrap this particular video here if you want to know anything more about the cohort do mail us at algocamproot@gmail.com we will be happy to answer all of your queries till then take care bye bye i am sanket singh signing off